very good evening and welcome to Primetime News. I'm Sandro Ferdinando. Let's take a look at your headlines for tonight. The proposal to debate the motion of displeasure against the president rejected in parliament. Prime Minister votes with government. Ajit Raj Paksa appointed as deputy speaker. Flaws in the fuel distribution process. Long queues seen near filling stations. Main passivat me me wage adura darsi palakeo me Lanka wat bihino ve wage la prarthana karno. Me rate 33 kotiya dewor inno nam muwe parliament ekata ulka baata ekata inno lokkoma alu wela yanda. Seven parliamentarians in the CID list of suspects involved in the brutal attack on minor Gogama and Gota Gogama. Viman's revelation on the attack on peaceful protesters on the 9th of May. First up in news here at home, who was behind the attacks on peaceful protesters outside Temple Trees last Monday? Parliamentarians Vimal Viravansa and Uday Gaman Pila made a revelation today. When the economic crisis is turned into a humanitarian crisis, then the law won't be enforced and they can say that the police and the army are incapable of handling the situation. Then it paves the way for a foreign invasion. I'm not suggesting that those who were involved in the attack were aware of the bigger picture. The president instructed senior DIG Deshabandu Tenakon to avoid stopping the groups that were temple trees from heading towards golfers. I'm telling this based on the statement given by senior DIG Deshabandu Tenakon. The IGP had asked him what would be done. He had said that he wouldn't stop the mobs as the president has issued an instruction. The IGP had then advised him to contact the minister secretary. The minister secretary had also told Deshabandu Tendakon to avoid doing that as those are problems between the brothers and that the mobs are Mahindra Paksa's goons who would ultimately go scot-free. He was asked to remain neutral. Why wasn't the army brought into the scene? There is a plan behind this. Everyone is following the plan. We oppose the moves to bring large crowds to temple trees. That is because it provokes people to to fulfill the plan. We oppose the remarks made by Johnston Fernando as it provokes the people. The crow wearing the shawl created divisions even today. As long as that crow is there, everything will happen according to that plan. He was the one who made the plan to bring in large crowds. His foolish goons were a part of this. We understand this. I am saying this because I see it. Do you know what I told Namal Raj Paksa on a telephone call two weeks ago? There is an agenda to push this country into a trap. Don't be a part of that. Look at the luck of Ranil Vikramasinghe. He lost the election and was playing hide and seek outside parliament for one and a half years and then beating around the bush. It seems like he has won a lottery now. But we shouldn't act like fools during a crisis like this. People like Sajid Premadas won't be given the crown. If the crown is to be transferred, it would be for someone overseas. Everyone who didn't ensure that the rule of law was preserved last Monday should be removed. Give those positions to people who can preserve the rule of law. <laughs> It was government parliamentarians who brought these groups to carry out the attacks. It was government parliamentarians who provoked the people. These mobs gathered at the Prime Minister's official residence. It was government parliamentarians who sent them to golfers. If this isn't state-sponsored terrorism, what is it? We have our doubts as to whether they made the police and the army look weak as a part of this state-sponsored terrorist act. All politicians who supported this violence should be arrested. The law must be enforced equally against all of them. Sri Lanka Purujana Piramuna parliamentarians Sanat Nishanta and Milan Jayatilaka were arrested by the Criminal Investigations Department for their involvement in the attacks on peaceful protests in Colombo on the 9th of May. A senior police officer told News First that both MPs are currently being detained by the CID. In addition, former Provincial Council member Amal Silva and a Moratua Municipal Council worker who were arrested by the CID for attacking the two protest sites were produced to Colombo. Number 4th Magistrate Tirina Gamage, who ordered for the suspects to be remanded until tomorrow. In addition, Sri Lanka police arrested 664 people in connection to acts of arson and property damage across the island. Meanwhile, the proposal to debate a motion of displeasure against President Gotabe Rajpaksa was rejected in Parliament today. 
Earlier today, Sri Lanka Podujana Perimuna parliamentarian Ajit Rajapaksha was elected as Deputy Speaker. What happened in Parliament? Let's take a look. Sri Lanka's parliament met for the first time since Ranil Vikramasinghe was appointed Prime Minister. Former Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa and Namal Rajapaksa did not attend today's sittings. But parliamentarians Basil Rajapaksa, Chamal Rajapaksa and Shashindra Rajapaksa were present. This morning, Speaker Mahinda Yababe Vardhana informed parliament that the post of Deputy Speaker has fallen vacant. This is due to the resignation of Ranjit Simlapitiya from this position. The government then proposed the name of Ajit Rajapaksa, while the opposition nominated Rohini Kaviratna to the post. But some parliamentarians said the deputy speaker must be appointed without a vote. It costs more than 9 million to hold this election. The opposition leader's former party leader is the prime minister. Both of them can discuss and sort this out. Don't make a fool of the people by holding a vote here. this vote is unnecessary. Don't allow this. If the vote is being held by ignoring our objection, the members' ten parties who have joined us will spoil the vote. The Sri Lanka Freedom Party is requesting for one person to be chosen without a vote. If a vote is to be held, our party members will spoil the vote. I wish to thank the Prime Minister for saying that a woman should be appointed as Deputy Speaker. As a woman, I respect that suggestion. There there are only 12 women. A secret ballot was then held in Parliament to elect the new Deputy Speaker. Ajit Rajapaksa received 109 votes, while the opposition's nominee Rohini Kaviratna received 78 votes. I believe that my name wasn't nominated to the post as a result of a sudden decision. My name was proposed last time as well. But since we need to respect the unity between our parties, I respected the party's decision at that time. However, all of us know that we will have to face a situation like this when it comes to the standing orders and parliamentary traditions. As a woman, I I was a chair in Parliament when I was verbally abused. I feel that it is a twist of fate to contest against Ajit Rajapaksa. This house has shown the world that a woman doesn't have the right to be appointed to the top seat in Parliament. This Parliament today showed that gender equality only exists in the Constitution. We had agreed on who the Deputy Speaker would be even by this morning. But the Rajapakshas were fed up of me. That is because I was a parliamentarian who exposed their corrupt deals. The Prime Minister's first proposal regarding Parliament was that a woman should be given this position. Your first proposal has been defeated. Today you have become a puppet of the Rajapaksas. The failure of this government begins today. The Rajapaksas are continuing to do what they want. Today we saw that it isn't the President or the Prime Minister who is running this government, but instead it is a blackbird. Remembering that the people are chanting go to go home. They are demanding the Rajapaksas to go home. We will continue this struggle until that demand is met. 
I express my regret over the incident in Nitambur that led to the death of parliamentarian Atukorala. The properties of many parliamentarians were attacked. Protesters at Golface and Candy were also attacked. Those are grave mistakes. Those who committed them must be punished. I spoke to the IGP today. I said this matter would be raised in Parliament and asked him for an update. He said the Attorney General has issued some instructions and that action will be taken according to that. I would suggest you to call for a progress report once in two or three days. I condemn the incident at Golface. Many who are raising their voices had asked for ministerial positions from me. I had nothing to do with the appointment of the Deputy Speaker. I had promised to vote for Ranjit Siamalapitiya. The problem was then highlighted when the opposition leader and parliamentarian Prema Janta were speaking. I didn't participate even in the discussions chaired by the Speaker. I would like it if a woman is appointed to the post. It was my mother's auntie who last served as a Deputy Speaker in the Senate. Her name was Adeline Morimuni. No woman has been appointed to the post after that. That didn't happen in this Parliament as well. Don't blame me for that. I wasn't involved in this. Everyone says I am the only parliamentarian from my party. Therefore, I can't attend meetings of either the government or the opposition. I don't know which side I am on. We must change the culture in parliament. As the first step, I propose to set up a national council or a politburo in parliament. If possible, we can agree on certain matters. If we can't find common ground, then we can go for a vote. This culture must be changed on both sides. We can't move forward with this parliamentary culture. Parliamentarians are shouting from all sides. The people say there is no genuine commitment from us. Let's rectify that. That is why I'm asking to set up a national council. We can then discuss that. Following the appointment of the Deputy Speaker, Opposition Parliamentarian M.A. Sumandiran tabled a proposal to debate the motion of displeasure against President Gotabe Rajapaksa. The proposal was to debate the motion as a matter of urgency by suspending parliamentary standing orders. But the government did not agree to the proposal. They called for a vote to decide whether the motion should be debated today as a matter of urgency. Now by this motion, the president doesn't step down. This is not an impeachment motion. But as representatives of the people, this is an opportunity for us to reflect, to mirror what is being said by the country at large. I wish to remind you that when we look back at what happened in this country, the motion notes that the president has neglected his duties on 35 occasions. Rather than protecting the king, protect the rights of the MPs in parliament. We ask for a debate. You can decide on what process needs to be followed as per the standing order to debate this motion. However, it cannot take place today. We do not agree to suspend the standing order. We need to vote. Only 68 MPs had voted in favour of the motion that was produced to suspend the standing orders and debate the motion expressing displeasure on President Gotabe Rajapaksa. The voting took place electronically and 119 MPs voted against it. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe also voted with the SLPP and that means he was against the motion to suspend the standing orders and debate the motion expressing displeasure on President Gotabe Rajapaksa today. During both votes, the SLFP and the group of 10 parties were not present in the parliament chambers. Independent MP Nimal Lansa also opposed the motion. The SJB, the TNA and the NPP voted in favour of the motion, noting that the matter must be debated today. General Secretary of the Ceylon Workers' Congress, Chivan Thondaman, supported the motion. However, Marandapandi Rameshwaran from his own party voted against it. The country knows who is protecting the president, who is not protecting you. Absolutely shameless conduct by the Prime Minister, 
and all those who sit on the government benches. Because this motion of censure when it was drafted, Prime Minister who was in the opposition at that time wanted to have a look at it. I have the record here, evidence of that. I sent it to him on the 26th of April. He vetted it. He sent it to Goldfairs. He got their consent also. He issued two public statements on the 30th of April saying I will vote for this. Why did he vote against that being taken up today? What games is he playing? Only thing that has changed between that day and today is that he has got a job as a Prime Minister. He has traded his principles, his policy which he publicly told this country for a Prime Minister's job. That's the Prime Minister we have in this country. We are ashamed. He says I didn't take this job to protect anybody. Then why did he protect the President in this vote that was taken a little while ago? He stands exposed. The so-called government stands exposed. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister had responded to the views expressed by Parliamentarian M.A. Sumandiran today. It was, a, it was not a motion to remove him. It was not a motion in any way of no confidence. It was just a motion uh, of displeasure. So I was of the view that it should not be done today since the members of Parliament had requested Tuesday be set aside to discuss the attacks on the houses, the death of one MP and the injuries caused to another member of Parliament. And I said that should be done. Uh, we have only got to discuss in addition to it the progress of the inquiries on the attack on Gotago uh, Gamma. Unfortunately today the opposition had decided to move this resolution. In the meantime, the members of parliament said quite correctly that priority must be given to their issues and this matter could be discussed later. Because they pressed ahead with it, the motion was uh, defeated. My worry is that as a result of this defeat, the main motion may not uh, be uh, taken up again because of the lack of numbers. Speaking on News First 10 Questions program, Parliamentarian M. A. Sumandiran responded to the Prime Minister's clarification. The President won't have to resign simply because the proposal is passed, but he must resign on democratic principles. It is an ethical issue. They say the issue of the Houses of Parliamentarians being attacked is a massive problem, and that is why they rejected the proposal. But for more than a month, there have been calls for the President to step down. That is where everything began. That is why we pushed for this to be done today, but they didn't allow it. Continuing in more local news, Sri Lanka's fuel crisis is continuing to worsen, leaving people in long queues at filling stations. I have been waiting since 7.30 in the morning. I couldn't eat or drink tea. Have the dollars in the country been eaten by termites? They have been looted by the 225 parliamentarians. That is why we are in queues. I couldn't run a hire. Fuel cargoes are turning back because the government can't pay for them. Has any one of them waited in fuel queues or gas queues? We heard that 200 to 300 gas cylinders have been found at the houses of the 225 parliamentarians. Now a curse has befallen them. Can you see how many people are in queues? These people have been waiting since 4 in the morning to pump petrol for 1000 rupees. The parliament has convened today. They will drink, enjoy and laugh at us. The shortage of petrol, diesel and kerosene oil has worsened in the country. Many filling stations in Colombo and suburban areas did not receive fuel today. Long queues were seen near filling stations that received fuel. About two-thirds of filling stations in Horana had not received fuel today. People were seen in line even during the rains near a filling station that only sold diesel. People of Horana blocked the Horana Colombo Road near the filling station in Korala Ima demanding fuel. The group protested for nearly an hour. Later, a Bowser carrying petrol arrived at the filling station. 
Filling stations in Anuradhapura did not have fuel this morning. One person had arrived at the filling station with a fuel tank of a tractor as fuel was not issued to cans. Filling stations in Dehiyattakandir received fuel after 15 days. Farmers say that they have not been able to cultivate using their machines as there is no diesel. Their cultivations have been stalled despite receiving water about 17 days ago. <laughs> Our correspondents inspected the filling stations in Pallebedda and Kolumbage are today. Only one filling station sold diesel. Filling stations in Kurunagala did not have fuel this morning. Long lines of vehicles were seen due to the fuel shortage. <laughs> Long queues were seen near filling stations in Jaffna and surrounding areas. Some people held the protest blocking the Matra Akuras Road near the Akuras Sipetko filling station. The police intervened to bring the situation under control. <laughs> Drivers who were in line in Tangol were not able to purchase fuel. Six filling stations in Kalutara did not receive fuel until this morning. Long queues were seen in Kandy today as well. Protests opposite the president's office in Colombo entered its 39th day today. Religious events were held at the Colombo protest site at Golf Face in line with Vesak last night. <laughs> Convening a media briefing today, some artists demanded that those involved in the attacks on peaceful protesters last week must be arrested. It is the duty of any government, police or the army to serve justice on behalf of the people. The first thing they spoke in parliament was the safety of parliamentarians. They are not uttering a single word on the safety of the people. A government must serve the people. We are speaking on behalf of that. Thereafter, the group engaged in a protest at the Occupy Golf Fest protest site. Today marks a decade since the murder of national rugby player Wasim Tajuddin. Many events were organized at the Gota Gogama protest site to mark his death anniversary. Nisal Suryarachi reports. Something special happened here today. The 10th death anniversary of former Ragarite, the Sri Lankan Ragarite, Basim Tajuddin, was commemorated here today at Gota Gogama. A documentary to celebrate the life of late national rugby player Wasim Tajuddin was displayed at the protest site at Golf Face. Earlier today, families and friends of Wasim Tajuddin offered lunch to disabled soldiers to mark a decade since his death.
The people in power are the very people who were in power that day. There was uh, Gotabe Rajapaksa, uh, who was the defense secretary, and then um, we had Rani Vikram Singh, who used Wasim's name in vain to come into power. I hope that at least now they will stop killings like this and, and, and give justice to the people of this country. A protest march was also held in memory of Wasim Tajdeen from St. Thomas's Preparatory School to the protest site. Rugby player Wasim Tajuddin 17th May 2022 marks 10 years since the tragic demise of Wasim Thajuddin, whose charred remains were found in a crashed car in Narhampeter. Mystery surrounds the death of Thajuddin as suspicions raised the possibility of murder. Rajapaksa administration directly blamed for the killing. Campaign slogan at 2015 presidential elections. 17th May 2012, charred remains of Wasim Thajuddin found in a crashed car near Shalika Grounds on Park Road, Narahampeter. Police ruled the death a traffic accident with a report by a judicial medical officer, Ananda Samrasekara, to back the claim. 27th July 2015, CID informs court that the death of Thajuddin was not an accident. 10th August 2015, CID exhumes the body of Wasim Thajuddin. An expert board handed over a second report and it revealed that Thajuddin had in fact succumbed to injuries during a brutal assault. 25th February 2016, court rules that Thajuddin's death appears to be a murder and ordered the CID to immediately arrest those involved. 23rd May 2016, then DIG Anura Senanayake arrested by the CID for his involvement with the murder and covering it up as a traffic accident. 20th September 2018, CID tells court that a defender jeep given to the Cyrilia Savia Foundation was used to abduct Wasim Thajuddin. 18th August 2019, Attorney General tells the acting IGP to immediately conclude investigations and submit material. 16th July 2020, former Colombo Judicial Medical Officer Ananda Samrasekara dead. 26th February 2021, former Senior Deputy Inspector General of Police Anura Senanayake dead. What happened to Wasim Thajuddin? The suspects are still at large. News first with the people. Meanwhile, in Parliament, ruling party MPs had forcibly taken away the mobile phones of two journalists who were in Parliament today to report on the proceedings. The incident led to a heated exchange in Parliament. Honorable Speaker, there are several people who have entered the Parliament complex and are recording videos. They are not MPs or staff. The mobile phones were taken. They were seen close to the committee room where the ruling party MPs were meeting. Therefore, for the security of these MPs, these people need to be investigated. They need to be removed and because of them, some are afraid to come here. There is no issue if they record using normal cameras. However, two people were recording us using small mobile phones. I would like to ask the speaker if people are allowed to record videos at any location inside the parliament. Please look into this. We are here to protect democracy, casting aside our personal security. <laughs> The chairman of Sri Lanka Parliament Journalists Association, Pragit Pereira, and journalist Kasun Samramvira were reporting on parliamentary affairs as usual today. When they were doing so, ruling party MPs following their meeting had snatched their mobile phones. I will not mention names as standing orders are in effect. I request that the mobile devices of the two journalists be returned and that a democratic environment be created for journalists to report without any hindrance. 
It is common practice among journalists to report following the conclusion of the parliamentary group meeting. This has happened before as well. I believe the incident may have been triggered by the immense pressure that the SLPP MPs are in. However, remember that such conduct reciprocates. If you continue to function as gangsters, we will have to head home the same way that the late MP Athakorala did. The Sri Lanka Parliament Journalists Association filed a complaint with the Valikada police today, citing that ruling party MPs W. Devira Singha and Indika Anuruddha obstructed them from performing their duties and snatched their mobile phones. The complaint added that MP Professor Channa Jayasumana aided in the confrontation. The journalist said the sergeant at arms in Parliament returned the mobile devices to them after erasing the footage recorded today. A heavy security presence was witnessed at all roads leading to Parliament. A permanent roadblock was also set up from Poldova Junction as part of the security measure. Roadblocks were also set up at the Parliament Access Road close to the Japan Friendship Bridge. Another roadblock was set up along the road leading to Parliament from Batramulla via Nelum Mavata. Several families in Sri Lanka are yet to recover from the economic impact of COVID-19. The shortage of goods is now rubbing salt on the wounds of the people. This report is of a destitute family from Deyata Kandir. In the village of Morgamana in Dehiyat Kandia, a family is still reeling from the economic impact of COVID-19. A few years ago, this mother used to sell bricks, making a profit of 4 rupees a block to feed her children and to set up a kiosk. The income she earned was just enough to satisfy the hunger of her six dependents. Just when things seemed to be getting better, she was affected by the coronavirus, which left her family helpless. The family had to sell their shop to purchase two oxygen tanks required by the mother to recover from the infection. Today, the children in this family, whose father has left them, are unable to even afford shoes, books and other study material. The chief priest of the Muagamana temple has offered every possible assistance to help the family tide over these difficult times. <laughs> Families like this are extremely destitute and can only afford one bowl of rice for two days. The shortage of fuel has ruled out any possibility of earning a living by farming. As a result, these children and this single mother are now facing the brunt of the country's economic crisis. For them, life has become a daily struggle. During today's parliamentary proceedings, several parliamentarians expressed views regarding the property damage that took place following the attack on peaceful protesters on the 9th of this month. Efforts must be made to find out whether there was an organized group carrying out these attacks. I propose that a special parliamentary select committee be appointed to look into this matter and steps be taken to look into the incident and to provide compensation to the victims of these violent attacks. These acts destroyed our lives. Our houses, offices and businesses were burnt and destroyed. The shrubbery in my garden was also destroyed. I don't understand this hatred. When I used to serve as the chairman of the Wariapola Pradesh Sabha, I built a house. My wife is a teacher. The house she built using her income throughout five years is burnt down today. My two children are studying at universities. It is my responsibility to fix their mentality, which is a harder task than fixing my house. I am saddened thinking 
thinking about how to fulfill my responsibility towards my children. <laughs> Dambulla Mayor Jalia Opatha visited his house in Tittawalgolla in Dambulla, which was torched recently. It is true that I was in Colombo, but I was not involved in any of those events. If such a thing had happened, I would be the first to be attacked. My two buses left from Mirigama. The incidents had taken place when returning from Minwangoda. Today I have fallen to the streets with no place to stay. My children are in hiding and I was assaulted. I seek relief from the law and for those responsible to be penalized. I built this house with my own money and my own efforts. I have never taken a cent from anyone. Many religious events were held at the Lankaram Temple in Milano, Italy, in line with the Vesak Full Moon Poetry. A Vesak procession of the Lankarama Temple paraded the streets of Milano in Italy on the 14th. Several religious events including a meditation program and a dance law organized by the Lankarama temple took place. <laughs> The religious ceremonies were held under the auspices of the chief incumbent Tero of the Lankarama Temple, Venerable Olobodue Dhammikatero. We hope these arms pujas bring peace to all people including the Sri Lankans. At a time when Sri Lanka is facing violence and a crisis, we wholeheartedly wish prosperity and peace to its people. Another phase of the Devi Savia program to distribute dry rations among families in need was held in Puttalam district today. The program is sponsored by LOLC. The Divisavia program sponsored by LOLC Holdings aims at supporting low-income families in many parts of Sri Lanka. Food packs were distributed among families in need at eight locations in the Putlam district today. Two teams carried out the distribution of food packs today. Trailing by 79 runs, Bangladesh posted 318 for 3 in 107 overs at stumps against Sri Lanka on day 3 of the ongoing first test match in Chittagong. Mushfikur Rahim and Litton Das was resuming batting for the hosts on day 4 and they'll be aiming to reduce the deficit. Earlier, Tamin Iqbal slammed 133 runs of 217 balls before retiring hurt. Meanwhile, Kasun Rajita took two. Sri Lanka posted 397 runs in 153 overs, with Angela Matthews clobbering 199 runs, becoming just the second Sri Lankan batter to be dismissed for 199 after Sanak Jayasuriya. And with that wrap up news for tonight, thank you very much for joining us. Do take care, stay safe and good night.